Welcome to Real Estate Investing for Women. On this show, you will learn how to create wealth through real estate the blissful way. That means with very little stress and very little time. We talk about strategies, mindset, heart set, money smarts, resources, and so much more to ensure you're able to create the success you most deeply desire. Now, here's your host, Monika Sawyer. Today, I am so excited to welcome to the show, Dr. Rani Shalev. She is a board-certified emergency physician turned real estate investor. She was a practicing ER doc for 16 years, but her job sucked the life out of her, leaving her drained, burnt out, and unable to enjoy her family and kids. She wanted to reclaim her life, but didn't know where to start. She was making great money. Her family was relying on her financially, so she was trapped by the golden handcuffs. That's when she started exploring the world of real estate investing and found a way to make recurring income without having to be physically at the hospital or with her patients. After some time, the income she earned from her real estate investments gave her the freedom to quit her grueling emergency medicine job and transition to the medical device company to a medical device company. Now Ronnie's mission is to share her knowledge with other women who are feeling trapped, want to free themselves from their job and live a life on their terms. Welcome to the show, Ronnie. It's so nice to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, you know, Ronnie, I don't I know we were talking a little bit about this in the green room, but it's interesting to me how many doctors have come onto the show talking about either how they are evaluating syndications or you are an actual syndicator. What's fascinating to me is my mom is a, is also an MD and I know what kind of income you you guys make, especially as an ER doc, like that's some crazy difficult stuff and they pay you well for that. It's fascinating to me to see how syndications and being a syndicator can replace that kind of income. It's such an inspiration and ladies, this is something to really think about, right? We wonder like, can I really replace my income? Think about this, the six-figure incomes that are being replaced with real estate. It's really, really awesome. So thank you so much, Ronnie, for coming to, to share your story with on the show. Oh, I'm so excited to, to share my story. And I, I know that a lot of people can relate Yeah, um, and wanting to design their own life. Yeah. And I'm definitely one of those people too. That's what bliss really means to me is being a choice, right? Not being a slave to the expectations of the world around us, whether it's our job or our families or whatever it is, right? We want to be able to live life on our own terms. So I just, it's just awesome. So give me, I know we did, I read your bio, but give me like high level, like why syndication? Why did you take this particular route? I was not ever planning on be a, being a syndicator. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, ever since I was a little girl, I wanted to be an ER doctor. You know, I wanted to help people. I wanted to take to help people with their health, with their life, in their times of need. But I remember a shift where I was alone. I was the only doctor in the entire ER. There was no scribe, no mid level, uh, no physician assistant, nothing. It was around ten o'clock at night. Um, and I was treating two stroke patients at the same time. Oh my goodness. Um, I also had an asthmatic, um, like having severe trouble breathing, someone having a heart attack. The waiting room was full. Uh, there wasn't an empty chair and you could see the pain and frustration on everyone's faces, you know, the patients, the families. And on top of it, there were like several ambulances lined up waiting to get checked in. Mm -hmm. I looked up at the clock to see like, when is my relief coming? Eight more hours. Wow. I was like, oh my God. I mean, the stress just was unbearable. I mean, I couldn't breathe. I was responsible for all of these people. You see the administrators had cut all of the physician hours and my assistant's hours, leaving only one doctor responsible for everyone who walked into the ER or was already there. So, I mean, I'm faced in this situation. What did I do? Well, I put my head down and I did it. <laughs> I took care of everyone at the expense of my own health. I mean, I didn't eat, drink, or pee during that shift. For eight hours? I, 12. 12. Wow. Yeah. 
I, I mean, I came home. I was like so exhausted. I collapsed. Um, I was collapsed on the bed, went to sleep in my scrubs, which is really unheard of because you feel disgusting after the hospital. And I slept the rest of the day. You know, my husband and my family, they didn't understand why I was so tired. You know, they they didn't understand that I'd taken care of over 50 patients that night with extreme stress, extreme liability. I mean, it's hard to fathom. Like, how could they? You know, I started to to think, like, what else was I supposed to do? Like, what else is there? You know, I'm a high paid hourly worker, you know, and I'm tied to my job like I I have to keep it, you know, and I, I was told by my administrators with no medical education how to practice medicine, how quickly to see the patients. And they made sure to tell me that I'm dispensable and could be fired if they didn't like my numbers. I started to think like, oh my God, you know, like, why did I love this job in the first place? You know, something has to change. And that's when I started looking at other options. What else is there? Um, how can I free myself from this job. And that's where, you know, I found real estate. Um, it was about that time that a friend told me that he was passively investing in real estate. And I didn't understand what that meant. Mm -hmm. You know, he was like, well, I own a piece of a hundred seven elevens and I receive a check every quarter. He's like, I get passive income. So I'm like, passive income. What is that? That's weird because for years I had been, working per hour, my time was not passive at all. My money was never passive. And so, so I thought to myself, this sounds weird. This sounds fishy. Is it a pyramid scheme? Is, is he lying to me? You know, it sounds like it's too good to be true. Um, maybe you could lose your money. You know, uh, I don't know. I was just very, very just paranoid, you know, and then I started thinking, and remembering what's going on in the hospital and with those administrators. I was just so frustrated about trading my health and my well-being for money. Um, and I decided, you know, why not? Let's just give it a shot. It's not like real estate goes to zero. Um, it's almost impossible for that. I mean, there, it's, there's hard assets, there's land. I mean, so my husband and I decided to dip our toe in and do a small investment first. Uh, oh my gosh, it worked. Um, we started getting checks every quarter. And I said, oh, well, this, this is interesting. Okay. Does it work again? Let's do it again. So we did it again. And again, we started seeing results. So that's where kind of we started investing. And now we've been part of over 26 deals. Um, we're always looking for new ones. And then I said to myself, you know, not, we, we did a reassessment and we said, uh, you know, I can leave medicine. I can go to something that's way less stressful just with this passive income that we've generated. And now it's, it took many years. It's not a, get, it took eight years, Okay, but I did, you know, it's, that's the thing. This is not like a quick, get rich quick scheme or something like that. This is a long-term strategy where you know what the outcome is. It's predictable. Mm -hmm. um, and so after I was able to do that, and I, I still see all of my physician friends and colleagues, you know, miserable, <laughs> you know, I, I'm telling them about like, this is what I did. And they're like, how did you do it? Did you win the lottery? <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't win the lottery. This is the actual strategy that I did. And, you know, they still have fear. Like, I don't have time to learn it. I don't have time to study it. I don't, I don't, you know, so I said, perfect. I'll do it for you. I'll do that. You can leverage my expertise. You can leverage my time. You can leverage other people's money through the banks. And I went and I studied how to do it actively myself. Um, so my husband and I, we took a mentorship program and we learned how to do it. And we started our own company where we are syndicating apartments specifically and bringing along other, you know, professionals. Mm -hmm. Do you ever miss the helping people aspect of medicine? So, you know, I help people all the time. Yeah. What I didn't know when I was looking at as being a physician as a career 
at that time I thought, well, this is how you help people. This is, mm-hmm. this is how you help people. And now I'm, I have some like a better perspective that you don't have to just help people with your, with your health. You can help them with their financial wellness. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I'm still helping, which is, you know, I think huge, but on top of it, I'm also able to still use my medical knowledge. I work at a medical device company mm-hmm. and it's not because I have to work there. It's because I want to work there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, we're helping thousands of patients every single day. Mm-hmm. So I get to use my medical knowledge. I get to use my investing knowledge and I get to help so many people on a grander scale. Mm-hmm. So I'm still feeling that drive to yeah. help people. And that's, you know, that feeling. Yeah. It's so interesting because I don't have to work either. I'm like you in your situation and I, but I'm by by nature, a coach, like my mom was a psychiatrist. It's, it's like, you know, she and I are so similar. My heart is to help. Um, And I found a very similar thing when I was coaching, I was training time for money. I gave up on so many other things that were important to me. It's certainly not comparable to you, Ronnie, but there's definitely that feeling inside of me of wanting to help. And, and now as I'm trying to redesign my life and retire and have more time for my husband and my family, my nephew and my parents as they're aging, I've got the financial wherewithal to not have to do anything. But my way of helping is by doing this show, because this way my, uh, my ladies are elevated by my guests and whatever little knowledge I can offer or whatever, you know, so it's, it's an opportunity for me to give back so that I have that peace inside of me fulfilled. So it's good that you're able to, and you know what? The biggest things in people's lives that we that we need abundance in are our health, our wealth, and love, our relationships, right? So just the three biggest things. Um, and you're handling two of them. That's unbelievable. <laughs> That's awesome, right? Yes. And I, I love I love that you're you're helping so many women and and just bringing on just powerful people to to really motivate because you know how how does someone know that they can do it without hearing that other people have done it too that's right that's right exactly so and thank you for sharing your knowledge with my ladies so talk to me a little bit about why you chose apartments so you know i we actually passively invested in a lot of different asset classes yes um i have so two did, by the way <laughs> we've done self-storage we've done retail centers we've done mixed-use buildings we've done industrial warehouse assisted living there's a lot that i've done mm-hmm. um and i actually like apartments the best okay just because they make sense to me i mm-hmm. feel like housing is a basic need everyone needs a place to live mm-hmm. everyone Mm-hmm. If they're, they're shopping online at, on Amazon, they're at home. Yes. <laughs> they're, they're working remote and they're, they're not going into the office. They're working remote. They're doing it from their homes. Mm-hmm. And now with, with the interest rates going up and I mean, the supply shortage and I mean, people can't afford a house. They can't afford a down payment. So there's a whole population of renters that have to be renters. Mm-hmm. But there's also a whole population of people that want to be runners. There's the millennials that they don't want to be tied down. They don't want to be, you know, having these roof leaks and plumbing and all kinds of deferred maintenance on their home. They don't want that. And then there's seniors. These are people that are trying to buckle down and live on fixed incomes. And they don't want surprise expenses with their homes. Um, so they're point. also... Yeah. And they're downsizing. They move out like they don't want to live. So they become renters. So there's all these people going to rent and there's not enough places. Mm -hmm. That's why rents are going crazy all over the place. So I'm going into apartments and I'm not just going into any apartment. We focus on recession resistant assets. So we're looking at class B, class C properties. And the reason I'm looking at that is because what what happens when you're in a recession, which is, you know, what people might say we're in right now. Uh, You're living in a class A building, high rise, there's a bellman, there's a, you know, doorman, there's whatever, all of it. Right. And, you know, maybe you have a pay cut or you get furloughed or, you know, you're let go. Where do they move? They move into class B. 
And same thing, the people living in class B move to class C. So I'm right in that demographic that whether we're in an, you know, an economic downturn or we're not, people are looking to live there. Okay. And then I'm taking those communities and I'm making them better. Yes. You no, know, I'm doing value add. You know, we're putting in dog parks, we're, you know, putting solar panels, we're, you know, including internet in our packages. Like, so we're doing a lot of nice things mm -hmm. for the residents, making them want to live, making it a community where, you know, it's a nice place to live. So mm -hmm. we're, what we're doing is we're adding value and we're making the residents have a great place to live. And then the investors make money. Yeah. It's like win-win. Mm -hmm. I love that. Tell me about how you pick your markets. So I know you're doing class B and C, but how do you pick the markets that you want to go into? Yeah. So I'm focusing on the Sunbelt states because I want people to be moving to where my apartments are. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking for landlord-friendly states. Okay. So I want to be able to evict if I need to, I don't want a tenant that lives there for two years and doesn't pay rent. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm looking for landlord friendly States. I'm looking for growing markets. So these are sub markets where people are moving into, why are they moving? Well, there's jobs. So I'm looking for where there's job growth. Now I don't look for only one employer or one type of employer, because the last thing you want is to have this robust factory, and then the factory closes and everybody loses their job and moves out of your apartment. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for markets where there are multiple diverse employers, energy, entertainment, device, biotech, whatever it is, there's a lot of variety. So if one goes out of business, they're not all going to go out of business. Mm -hmm. And you can't completely reduce risk, but you can start thinking and pre-planning. And if you have a safety plan, okay, so I'm, you know, I'm looking for recession resistant assets. I'm looking for places, you know, where you can evict tenants that aren't paying because the goal is to bring income. Right. We want to make sure that people are moving there. We, we want to make sure that there's employers, um, different types of employers. So there's a lot of thought into market selection. Mm -hmm. So um, in extra, we're going to be talking about how to mitigate risk. And my belief, and you correct me if I'm wrong, is part of the mitigation of risk is how you choose a market. Is that true? Absolutely. Perfect. So Absolutely. we'll do a deeper dive on that. So we get a little bit more conversation around that and extra. I'm super excited about that. <laughs> Could you tell us, Ronnie, a little bit about, you talked about passive investor versus active investor, right? Give me your perspective on it, because as a doctor, it's going to look very different than it does for the rest of us. So go ahead and define for me what you were looking for as far as passive investor versus active investor. So a passive investor, is someone that so personally, I absolutely love, love, love passive investing. I think it is the ultimate way to explode your wealth. And the biggest reason because of that is because of leverage. Yes. You are leveraging other people's expertise. So I'm not going as a passive investor to go and fly into every city and drive around and see what the best areas are and then do research on which, you know, companies are moving there, who's moving their headquarters, what's happening in the, the city design planning. Like I, someone's doing that for you. You're not spending your time doing it. Now, you're also leveraging other people's relationships. So you're not having to forge relationships with brokers and tour properties and show them that you're serious. You're also not having to sign on any loans. I mean, when you're when you're a passive investor, you're not having to find the financing and the debt and all that stuff and, and meet all these bankers and mortgage brokers and, and who has the but you don't have to do all of that. You also don't have to be finding the deals, analyzing them. You're leveraging other people's expertise. You're leveraging other people's time. You have a life. You're a busy professional. You have a family. And you just want extra income, but you don't want to be tied to, you know, a new hobby where, like, I wasn't planning on um, being a landlord, you know, uh, like tenants calling you and, and termites and there's a leak and there's a, a fire. You don't want to, it, 
you know, passive investors don't have to deal with any of that. Mm -hmm. Active investors, on the other hand, they're the people that want to do work. They want to do work. Um, And they're the ones that are finding the properties. They're the ones that are doing the analysis, the market analysis. Is this a good market? Is this a good property? Does this make financial sense? It, it, you know, so they're the one. And then what is the business plan? Is this a buy and hold? Are we holding it for a long period of time and just waiting for it to go up? Or are we renovating it? Are we raising rents? What, what are we doing? You're the one that creates the plan. You're in charge of it. And then you're also in charge of executing that plan. So making sure that the contractors are coming, that the property managers are renting out the units, that there's marketing to the property. So you're doing a lot of that stuff. And then at the end, you're the one that does the capital, you know, the exit plan. So you either refinance it or you sell it. So those the active people are doing active work. So mm-hmm. it really depends on what you want, right? As as a person, how do you want to design your life? And that's what I love about real estate. Anything you do in real estate, you're going to do well. You know, is it active? Is it passive? Is it commercial? Is it residential? There's just so many things that you can do and you're going to do it well. You know, as long as you, you know, have the right team, have the right education about it, you, anyone can do it. Mm-hmm. It is available to anybody. That's what I love about real yeah. estate. That's not true in other parts of the world. But here in the United States, we are so lucky. The government even helps you do it. Right. Absolutely. So and rewards you for doing it. They want people to own their houses. They want people to feel committed to their communities. They want that. And so they encourage us to do that. Um, and it's interesting because when we look at when we look at passive versus active, there's a whole spectrum of passive versus active. Right. The ultimate passive is inviting as um, investing, for instance, in REITs or syndications. I'd love for you to address that, by the way, mm-hmm. all the way to the fully active being the syndicator or doing all of those other things. And I have an active model. Personally, I have an active model, but I only work five to 10 hours a month. So it's a sort of active like I consider it passive. Right. So for me, that's what I consider passive. But you're right. It's not fully passive. I'm I'm my own acquisition person. I have the exit strategy. I'm calling the tenants for rent raises, right? I'm doing all of those things. It doesn't take me a lot of time. So it seems much more passive than a 40, 40 hour a week job or 60 hour a week job, which is what I had before. But it's still very, um, it's very passive. It's more active than what you're talking about. Could you tell me a little bit about your perspective on REITs versus syndication? Yeah, for sure. So a REIT is very similar to um, a stock. Okay. So you are buying shares of a company that is owning properties and managing properties. So you're not actually owning the real estate itself. So a positive of with a REIT is that your money's not locked into a property. Okay. So you can buy it, the stock, you can sell it, you can you know, just like a, just like the stock market, you know, you you're very liquid. You can go in, you can go out. What I don't like about REITs is that you don't own the real estate. You're investing in a company. If the company is spread thin or something happens in the company, those shares do go down. It's not a it, it's not a for sure thing. Not that anything is for sure. Real estate is getting the depreciation from the real estate. Mm-hmm. And if you are owning part of a company, you're not getting the depreciation. Um, So really owning and and, in a syndication, you are an actual owner of the property. You get a a depreciation, you get the tax benefits um, without having the headaches of the home ownership. Got it. Okay. Thank you for that. That was awesome. I love what you're sharing. I'm so inspired by your story and what you've been able to do. Could you tell us, Ronnie, how people can get in touch with you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so I have um, just an email account. That's if someone wants to email me, it's Ronnie, R-O-N-N-I-E at Shalwin Properties, S-H-A-L-W-I-N properties.com. So you can email me and, you know, I'm happy to hop on a call and, and, and talk to you about like, what, what do you want? What do, how do you want your life to look? How active do you want to be? How passive do you want to be? You know, picture a day when you go to work because you want to go to work, Mm -hmm. 
not because you have to go to work. Picture a day when your spouse tells you, you seem happier. You seem healthier. I love the freedom that we have now in our life. Picture a day that you can travel if you want to travel, relax if you want to relax, or serve others if you want to serve others. That's what real estate investing can do for you. And that's what it did for me. And that's why, you know, I'm so passionate about real estate and helping other people. So yeah, email me. I'll be happy to, you know, connect. I love that. And tell us a little bit about your free gift. Yeah. So I offer a free um, masterclass about passive real estate investing. Really what it is, what, what, you know, what are the different asset classes you can invest in, the difference between active and passive, a lot more in depth than we're talking about here. And um, what is a syndication? What are returns we're looking like? You can find it at invest.shalwinproperties.com. That's invest.shalwin, S-H-A-L-W-I-N, properties.com. Perfect. And those links are all, of course, going to be in the show notes, ladies, so you can find them there. Thank you for that. That'll be a great way for people to get started and sort of get to know passive investing a little Mm -hmm. bit more. So thank you. So ladies, we are going to be um, doing extra, which is going to be about how to mitigate risk. And we're going to be doing a little more of a deep dive also on finding markets. So we're going to do that after our three rapid fire questions. So Ronnie, are you ready for three rapid fire questions? I'm ready. Okay, good. (laughs) (laughs) So give us one strategy on getting started investing in real estate. I think the best way to start is to find out the different ways that you can start Mm -hmm. and figure out how do you want to start? Do you want to be, do you want to be doing it all? Do you want to start passive and then be active later? Do you want to start active and maybe be passive later? Do you want to do both? I think the first step is to sit down and actually think, what do you want to do? And then Mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my big thing is like taking action is so important. Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you on that. And then what is one strategy on being successful as a real estate investor? I think it's really important to listen to podcasts. And this is just like an easy thing. Just try to educate yourself and just hearing people talk about stories, like how they did it, how they did it. Once you hear how they did it so many times, you start thinking like, hey, I can do it too. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound so hard. Um, And listening to other people's successes and how they did it, I think is very important in being successful yourself because success leaves clues. It absolutely does. Yeah. And it's kind of like a personal self brainwashing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like really building that confidence. It all starts in the mind, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I I believe that. that strongly. Yeah. Um, tell us one daily practice you do, Ronnie, that, that contributes to your personal success. And we're going to do my, like mindset. I work on my mindset every single day. Stress is, I think, wired into me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whether I'm in the ER or I'm doing real estate, you know, my mind is always thinking and in calming my mind down. So one of the big things that I do is I meditate. Um, but I also practice something called reframing, where if you're thinking one thing, you release pause and you start thinking like, OK, it, it, is this thought serving me? Is this helping me to think this way? How am I going to get where I want to be? And no, it's, it's certainly not going to be thinking this way. You got to start thinking the other way. So really trying to manipulate how I'm thinking and trying to always reframe. Um, is a big thing that's that's always helped me. Yeah. Reframing is such an interesting thing because people are like, I, you know, you're just making it up if you're reframing. Well, the the thing is that you made it up in the first place, right? right. Any situation that's <laughs> happening could be happening to 10 different people and they'd have 10 different reactions. The Absolutely. situation 
is not the problem. It's a story that we make up about it that that creates our response, right? And so if you're going to make up the story anyways, you might as well make up a story that's more serving to your business, to your joy, to your life, right? Absolutely. And there's something in our minds that we have something called automatic negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. And that is like back in the caveman days where we were trying to protect ourselves. Um, Oh, someone's coming, you know a tiger or whatever it is, <laughs> that, that's, that is a pres- preservation thing. Our mind does that. We have to stop and we don't have to listen to every single thing our mind tells us. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something that is important. Um, I think that for people to understand, like you need to recognize when you're starting to, to spin in a spiral of negative thoughts that might not be true. Right. Right. Yeah. True is an interesting word. Right. Right. Because what's true for me, I mean, I think there are some basic truths like don't kill people. Right. Like that's probably (laughs) a basic truth. Right. But um, right. But (laughs) but um, in general, in our lives, truth is very subjective. You know, what is true is what you're perceiving is not necessarily truth. Mm -hmm. So I love that. Thank you so much for all that you've offered in this portion of the show. This has been wonderful, Ronnie. Thank you so much for having me. I love talking to you. Yeah, ditto. And we get to talk more and extra. Yay! Yay. (laughs) (laughs) So ladies, stay tuned. We're going to be talking about mitigating risk in syndications and picking markets. I'm super excited about that conversation. So if you are subscribed to Extra, stay tuned. If you're not, but would like to be, go to realestateinvestingforwomenextra.com. For those of you that are leaving Ronnie and I today, thank you so much for joining us for this portion of the show. You know how much I love having you here and I look forward to seeing you next week. And until then, remember, goals without action are just dreams. So get out there, take action and create the life your heart deeply desires. I'll see you soon. Bye. I hope you enjoyed today's show. If you'd like to find out more about how to become a blissful millionaire, go to blissfulinvestor.com. See you next time.